it's a Mendelssohn year, so we are going to do uh, the small excerpts with chorus uh, from the Midsummer Night's, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, Dream yes. to make about uh, 35, 40 minutes. What do you put with that kind of music on a program? Yes. Uh, and to put something that you don't have done so often, I just came on the idea of, or the idea of uh, making the Rosini Stout, which I think is two composers who go very, very beautifully together. And it's an attractive combination for the public. And a wonderful treat for the chorus, because the chorus, as I say, hasn't done it in all those years. And uh, so it's, it's a totally different change in style and in, in yes, musical yes, diet. Yes. I think it's one of the great uh, oratorial pieces ever written. Uh, I, I do it as much as I can. I think I have done it quite a while in, in some parts of the world. It's interesting, we don't hear it here much. Uh, I've only done it once, actually, in my life, and that was with Maestro Giulini, which is a very long time ago now. John and I agree uh, to one thing, and it was very interesting to me to hear that he had done it with Giulini also in that way. That's right. Uh, the, uh, it's a number called Quartet. It's written in the editions that I have seen for quartet, solo quartet. And I cannot bring it to myself that a man who wrote so beautifully for voices, I mean, he's one of the great writers in history oh. for voices, Stunning. that he would put a 25 bars or whatever they are on the end of that quartet for the bass, making one of the... I think yes. it's obviously, for me, it's choral music. I immediately was in love with that chorus. And one of the things that I admire of this chorus, and it's not only that, is that I seldom get an ensemble of that who follows so well your instructions the moment of the concert. And that's because they sing by memory. And they don't look at the score, they look at you. When I first heard this piece, and I first heard the Petite Mrs. Solon now, I thought to myself, now this is a great writer of comic opera, surely this is a parody. <laughs> <laughs> but, but clearly, clearly, the style of the time uh, uh, dictated the kind of writing that there is in both pieces. I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, when I perform it most in Germany, you hear this kind of voices of people. Well, when you hear the tenor aria, the parole, right. people think, well, that is not serious. Well, Germans uh, have another idea of the religion. It's not, it's not, it's not reverent. It's not reverent, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I have to disagree on that. Yes. Everybody, if you take uh, the, the way that people have uh, pray to God or, or, or made homage to God eh? yes. is the way they know. Well, that's and just I mean, just like Haydn. Haydn yeah. wrote masses and was criticized for how extremely happy his masses were. And he said, if I'm happy when I praise God, that's between God and me. One day I said, uh, Raphael, why don't you come to my house here in the country for dinner and see the garden? And he came and we had a... See the best tomatoes that are produced <laughs> here in this country. And I tell you, we had such a wonderful time and we've had many wonderful times since and we just have a wonderful friendship. And we understand music, at least choral music, in pretty much the same Absolutely. terms. Absolutely. Because there are other generations uh, now who understand music quite differently than what we do. Yes. But John and I are about in the same That's right. That's wave. Right. That's exactly right. And that makes a lot of fun. He's slightly older. <laughs> <laughs>